What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. If you don't know who I am, that means you're new. I'm Mark. Let's go with y'all. Go check out my other videos. Check them out. Check them out. But first, stay on this one. So, you know, I've kind of touched on this topic a bit, but I realized I've never done in my almost 300 videos I've done because I, I don't know. I, I enjoy making content for you guys, especially about guns. But back to what I was saying. I've never really done a video addressing just this topic alone and going in detail. How much should you or how much you should spend on your first gun? Now, of course, this is varying based off what kind of gun you're getting, what model, what brand, what platform, whatever. You, you, there's a lot of variables here, so there's a lot to discuss. So no more beating around the bush. Let's get right into it. For starters, we're going to start with handguns. So roughly speaking, handguns, I would argue for your first handgun, you should probably spend around four to 500 at the least. Some of you guys might be wondering, well, why would you go with such a high number when guns like the Taurus G2C are you know, around, when the SD9, the SD9 2.0 are around? Well, there's reasons as to why I'd recommend you know, going for a higher price point. So if this is your first gun, chances are, and I, I hear you guys on this. If it's your first gun, chances are you're broke. I've been there too. I mean, granted, I'm not exactly flush with cash right now either, but you know, I'm not as broke as I was when I bought my first gun. So, hey, moving up in the world, right? But, <laughs> but I get it. Your first instinct when you see that price tag that says two or 250, 150, when you see a price tag like that, it, 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 it it gives you a little tickle inside because you're like, you know what? Maybe I can get that. Yeah, let me get that. Save some money. And I'm sure there are going to be people who are like, oh, well, my super cheap gun works perfectly and I spent the extra money on ammo, so I got to shoot more. I don't really care. Uh, now, moving on. <laughs> I'm aware that if you're buying your first gun, there's a decent chance that you're younger and I don't mean like a minor or anything like that. I just mean that you're not in your 30s or 40s or whatever. You are you don't have a ton of money to spend. I get it. It's real irritating to hear. But when you go past that $250 price mark and you really push it up, say 400, you get a much higher quality firearm than you would at the $250 price mark. And that makes such a big difference. With $400, you're looking at a couple of really good canics. Uh, with $400, you're looking at a used Glock. You're looking at a lot of different products here that it opens up a whole new world of reliability that you would definitely want with your first firearm. And that's something that you can't really put a price on, in my opinion. Granted, I mean, the store did, but doesn't mean I'm going to put a price on it. I think reliability is priceless. So I would argue definitely between the four dollars $500 mark for handguns, uh, whether you're going for a semi-auto or a revolver, that's on you. You know what I mean? Uh, with revolvers, depending on what brand, you might spend a little bit more. I just want to point that out. But uh, generally speaking, for your first handgun, you're probably going to get a semi-auto. Uh, you're probably, at that, going to get a semi-auto striker-fired handgun. So you, about four or 500 should be fine. Get you a good quality gun. Not, not super expensive, not some Gucci'd out gun but something that you can rely on, something that will protect your life, and something you don't have to worry about it malfunctions. You don't have to worry about all these issues that, realistically speaking, could be the matter of life and death. Now, that's just for handguns, right? Some people, they don't start with handguns. Some people start with shotguns. Some people start with rifles. You know, so let's talk about it, right? Shotguns, overall, are usually a cheaper platform. So obviously, that's going to feel pretty good on the bank account. You know what I mean? Uh, of course, you know, that does change what price point I'm going to put down here. For a good, reliable pump action shotgun, which is probably going to be your first shotgun, most people, they don't get semi-auto shotguns as their first shotguns. They don't get single barrels or double barrels, whether it's over, under, side by side. Most people get a pump action shotgun as their first shotgun. And I mean, why not? You know, everybody loves, everybody, Everybody loves, you know, pumping a shotgun, right? Uh, however, my whole point is simply that the price point being a good bit lower, obviously this is going to be, you know, an easier choice. <clears throat> Anywhere from two to 400, I would argue. 
for your first shotgun, you don't need to go to anything super expensive. Uh, there are extremely reliable options, like a ton of them actually, at that price point. And realistically speaking, 400 might even be pushing it for some of these options. I might be like, oh yeah, I'm getting it at a pawn shop and they're overcharging me. You know, overall, the, the one of the great things about pump action shotguns, which is generally speaking the first shotgun somebody gets, is that you are you are in control of its reliability. You 100% are. If you short stroke it, you're going to have a malfunction. If you work the firearm properly, you're going to have an extremely reliable gun. And I mean, what else can you ask for? You're looking at a pump action shotgun here. Chances are you're going to get it in 12 gauge. So you're looking at a very capable round out of a very capable platform with a very good price. As long as you know how to operate it, it is very capable and very reliable. That's a, that's a pretty easy way to say it, you know. Uh, the reason why I chose this price point is because I feel if you're going any lower than $200 for a shotgun, maybe unless you're buying it from a friend, you know, and you know it's a good shotgun, whatever. But if you go any lower than $200, you're, you're definitely risking reliability. And I'll be honest, while can I 100% say this with certainty? No. What I can 100% say is that what I feel comfortable going out of my way to buy and use a, say, $150 shotgun for home defense, probably not. That's just me, though. I mean, I don't know. I spent like I spent like $300 on my Maverick 88. You know what I mean? It's not that much more expensive to go ahead and get yourself a, a pretty good pump shotgun. Pump shotguns are not expensive at all. Ammo isn't expensive. So therefore, you're going to get a lower price point, and it's probably going to be what most people go to for their first firearm, unless they're thinking. Some people, they just buy a shotgun uh, for their first firearm because they're like, oh yeah, someone breaks in, I'm going to hit them with my shotgun. Yeah, okay, but what about when you're out? Whatever, I'm getting off, I'm getting off topic here, I'm getting off on a rant. Uh, <laughs> however, though, Two to four hundred dollars, you should find a pretty good, pretty reliable pump shotgun if that's what you want it to be for your first firearm. Now, moving on, we're gonna go to rifles. I know a couple of people who their first gun was their rifle, whether it's an AR, an AK, whatever it is, right? What price point would I argue is a good price point? Now, of course, that really is depending on what kind of rifle you want to get. Now, I know for a fact that a lot of y'all are not going to sit here for your first rifle. I want to get this Daniel Defense. I want, you know, you're not going to get that. I'm sorry, but let's be 100% real here. For your first rifle, unless you are flush with cash, which, which once again, if this is going to be your, not beyond just your first rifle, but your first gun as a whole, you probably are not flush with cash. So all these super expensive brands that you see, you can pretty much throw out the window. All these super expensive cool guns that you see out the window. <clears throat> Overall, for rifles, I would argue, and there's a couple of reasons why I'm, uh, uh, geez. there's a couple of reasons why I'm putting out this number here. I would argue anywhere from five fifty to seven fifty. And the reason why I make the argument for this number is due to the fact that one, AKs are not cheap. So even if you did decide to go the AK route, the cheapest one I could find that, you know, is an, not an actual AK because it obviously is made here in the U.S. You know, it's a clone. But, uh, you know, that actually shoots 762 by 39 and has a chance of being reliable is PSA's GF3. Now, notice how I said has a chance of being reliable, but that's beyond what I'm getting at here. You're not going to find too many quality rifles for less than that price point. Uh, rifles overall cost more just because of the fact that they take more material to make. Uh, the ammo itself is not going to be, I mean, depending on what caliber, it's not going to be the easiest ammo to find compared to something like 9mm, 22LR, whatever. Uh, but overall, you want to make sure that you're getting something that can ensure a decent level of reliability. When you cheap out, is when you start seeing issues. Some people might argue, oh, well, I have this, you know, I have this 2011, it's $3,000 and, you know, it malfunctions all the time. There are other reasons why guns malfunction other than just cheaping out, obviously. I'm not saying that is the only cause for malfunction. Jeez, I am itching. I don't know why. But uh, 
I'm not saying that the only cause for malfunction is cheaping out. However, I am saying that if you cheap out, you probably are going to experience malfunctions a lot more. So put two and two together there. You do the simple math. Uh, 550, you can find pretty much a okay, I guess you could say, PSA AR-15. That's about it. You know what I mean? Uh, that's probably the lowest I would even go when it comes to a rifle due to the fact that, once again, you want to ensure a level of reliability. You can get an okay AR. You can get an okay AK. You can get, you know, you can get some okay rifles for the 550 to 750 price point here. And let's say you do decide to, you know, get a PSA AR, for example. You know, you spend about 550 on it, right? Upgrade charging handle, less than $100. Get, you know, Sig Romeo 5 on there. You know, cheap little dot that'll actually hold zero. You see what I mean? With, with that extra couple hundred dollars right there, yeah, you can get some good stuff right there. No one's making a debate against that. However, once again, I'm giving you guys a pretty logical starting point, especially if this is going to be your first gun. I get it. I get it. Once again, most people who are buying their first guns, they're probably not flush with cash. However, it's still something you need to still put in a good little bit of money to ensure reliability. That's the best way to put it. If you're going to cheap out, you're going to get cheap parts that break. You're going to get cheap parts that malfunction, even if they don't break, but they're not going to work properly. So in the end, I think that these are all fair price points. You know, the four to $500 price point for handguns, that seems pretty reasonable. The two to $400 price point for shotguns, that seems pretty reasonable. The 550 to $750 price mark for, for rifles, that seems pretty reasonable. None of these are extremely high in cost however with the amount of money you're spending and where firearms technology is at nowadays you should as long as you do your research be able to get a decently reliable firearm in any of those platforms whether it's a handgun shotgun or rifle but i think that about wraps it up for this video i know this video was one of those you know a bit more opinion-based videos However, I do feel the need to express my opinion on this, especially seeing as I was once in some of these people's shoes where I was trying to decide how much to spend on my first firearm. Now, with that being said, y'all make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, hit that bell. When you hit that bell, hit all. And whether or not you agree with me on this, I mean, I, I don't know. I think, as I said, I think these are fair price points. But whether or not you agree with me, make sure to check out all my other videos. Y'all make sure to stay legal, stay safe, stay dangerous. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.